All right then guys, what we've done so far was doing a request to a single page. Right now, I want to focus on route params. This might sound difficult, but trust me, it isn't. Sometimes you want to pass in some kind of data to a specific file to render dynamic data. The first thing that I want to do is to clean up my page a little bit. So let me get rid of all the comments that I have. And all right, this is good for now. Let's hop to our web.php. Whenever a user does a request to forward slash products, it will display all products. But a user might also have an option to click on a button that then shows data of that specific product. If you have ever noticed in the URI of a shop, you have basically have seen a, well, let's say forward slash products, forward slash product name, or a forward slash products, forward slash product ID. What I'm showing you right now is basically a name param. So let's create a new request. Let's say route get to the endpoint of products forward slash. And right now we need to define our route param. And in Laravel, they are always encased within a set of curly braces. So we're opening and closing curly braces. And this should consist of alphabetic characters. So what I want to do is to say to ID. I think it looks better and it's a little bit easier to read. Then we need to pass in the controller. So products controller class comma and a method that we haven't created but we will do called show which will show a specific product. All right, let's hop to our controller. Let's scroll down right below the about function. Let's create a new public function show that we just mentioned in the web.php. Think about it. Do we need to add something in here? Well, yes, we've added an ID in the web. Now we need to use that same ID inside our controller. So let's pass in variable ID. Now, if we go to the browser, well, if we add something after our endpoint, so let's say an integer of 24, Nothing has happened. Well, we're not getting an error message and that's good. So we're missing something. We need to perform some kind of action to get the ID in the URL. All right, let's return to our view and inside our function, let's return that specific ID, which we defined in the web.php. So let's save it. Let's go to Chrome, refresh it. And you can see that 24 has been printed out on the screen, which is equal to the endpoint that we have. If all this is new to you, let me explain you one more time what we just did. In our web.php, we created an endpoint. We've said that if there is a request in the URI to anything after products, grab it and set it equal inside our controller to an ID variable and basically return that specific ID. Let's do something else right now. Instead of using IDs, let's pass in a product name. And again, let's start at the route. So instead of using ID, let's say name. Let's go to our show method. Let's get rid of the return ID and let's change it as a param to name. Let's actually copy the array that we have inside our index. Let's paste it right inside of the show method. Let's change the keys to iPhone and the second one to Samsung. All right, right outside of our array, we need to return a view of products.index, comma, brackets, and let's send back an associative array. So we have our products to our data array, brackets, and we want to see if there is a match between the name that has been passed in in the URI with the key of our array. So let's say variable name. All right, before we go back to our Chrome, let's hop to our views. Let's get rid of the for each loop because it will cause an error. Let's create a new paragraph again. For the braces, variable products. Let's save it. Let's go back to Google Chrome. But instead of saying 24, let's write down iPhone. And you can see that iPhone has been printed out. If we change it to a value that does not exist in our array, so let's say U1Y, 
we're getting an error because Huawei is not defined as an index. So what we could do is to hop to our controller and right after our array, we could add a null call listing operator. And we can do that by adding a double question mark, add a string. So let's say product concatenate variable name does not exist. Actually I need to word wrap it in a second. All right, let's save it. The double question mark returns its first operand. So first what's on the left hand side, if it's a null, it will return the second operand, which is a piece of text that we have. Let's save it. Let's go back to Chrome. Let's refresh it. And product 1Y does not exist, has been printed out on the screen. 